Paris, uh, uh, illustrious, probably more print about him and the Roman Free Press than any other place in the Western world. <laughs> I'd like to say a word. I'm here today because Councilman Brian Miller came to your last meeting and he shared with me when he laughed with several of you and wanted me to come to the meeting. And so I'm delighted to come. Um, I told Rick earlier I really like his t-shirt. Rick, move your hands. Move your hands. <laughs> and Greg, I guess we now know what's going in that new hangar out of the Rowan <laughs> County Airport. It's with the Rick's spacecraft, right? <laughs> the great thing is we don't have to worry about the runway extension because those things go up, right? That's an hour. So, as you probably know, the city's been a bit more aggressive the last two years in sharing our opinion, and I've actually I've taken that role. Uh, that's been kind of my role as city manager, and I have to give it to Steve and his website. He's done a good job putting my antics in cartoon form. So, for y'all to see. Um, so, but I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to say, if I was the county manager, I'd be working just as hard as I am now. For Mr. Sides and Mr. Pierce, but I'm not the county manager, I'm the city manager, and we have uh, goals and objectives that they want me to accomplish. Um, over the last two years, we've done quite well. We've doubled our fund balance. We were in financial trouble two years ago. You read about it. Uh, we've doubled our fund balance since then. We've gotten two bond rating increases. The city is financially stable. We're doing quite well. Uh, we have been focusing lately on improving our downtown, which is what Mr. Pierce is suggesting that we do. Uh, it's the heart of our city, it's an economic engine, it's important to us, and so that's been our focus. Um, you may have read lately about the mall and our involvement in the mall, uh, especially on Steve's website, and we do have some concerns about the mall. And there's always two sides to the story, and at risk of not ever being invited back uh, again to these meetings, here are concerns on the mall. Uh, the first concern is that our geologist says that there was a former SO station on the State School Boulevard on the mall side. Now, why this is important is that SO station closed prior to the environmental regulations being put in place that required soil remediation and groundwater remediation. In fact, the mall was built before those environmental regulations went into place. So we're concerned, based on our experience in the downtown, that there's some risk out there at the mall. Uh, the county commissioner says they'll do a phase one and phase two as part of the contract. I think that'll take care of it. Uh, but we are concerned. Are you concerned about the last 25 years? Uh, so all, all of a sudden you become concerned because the county decided that? Where, where is your concern been the last 25 years? I haven't heard a word out of it. We're, we're concerned. We're, 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 we're concerned. We're concerned because the cities, the, our city residents pay county taxes. You know, that's city money that's going out. As I stated, you haven't been concerned the last 25 years and they've still been your city residents. In fact, a lot of those people become your city citizens uh, just in the last 10 years. They weren't your residents then. They are now. They're not. It was, they're probably, it was probably owned back then, not, not government. And so that changes the concern. The second concern that we have is that, again, this is tax money going to this project and everybody has a smartphone. Uh, what type of smartphone do y'all have? I've got an app. Greg, what do you have? Yeah. Steve, what kind of smartphone do you have? None. None. <laughs> do you have, do you have what kind of smartphone do you have? Samsung. Are you giving us free smartphones? No. <laughs> Five years ago, if you were in this room, what type of smartphone would you have? You got a Blackberry. Top of the market back then. Five years ago, if BlackBerry was on the market for sale and it sold for $80 million, uh, it was doing pretty good. It was making a lot of money. Today, if it went on the market, you'd be lucky to get $8 or $10 million for it. You wouldn't be paying $120 million for BlackBerry today because its revenue is gone and its market is gone. So that's our concern about the mall is it sold for $2.5 million. Now we're looking at putting three and a half million dollars of government funds into buying the mall. Where'd you get that big draft? We didn't get it, did you? That's what the newspaper said. Where did the newspaper get it? They didn't get it from us. They didn't get it from us. <laughs> but the question I'd ask you, Commissioner Size, is do you feel that paying more than two and a half million dollars is a good decision for the mall? Well, I have I haven't announced that we're paying more than two and a half million dollars. I don't know where you get your information from. Okay. Well, you haven't been in our uh, close expectations, I don't think. Have you offered more than two and a half million dollars? You know that. It's like I said, Mr. Barry, 
those are closed sessions. I'm not at liberty to give you a figure at this point in time. Well, that's our concern. That's our understanding that no one Well, why is it your concern? Because it's it's citizens' tax money that's going into this project. And so we have a concern in the last 25 years. It was private no concern. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It was private no one. So well, our savings through the factory and the taxpayers for that yeah. as well. And the taxes didn't go up to 25. I'm a utility consumer, and you borrowed from the, the revenue that we spend on our water bill to and we're prop up fiber, and we're repaying that money. Oh yeah, but right now. But the concern, the concern is that there's no other bidders for the mall right now, and so we feel that if you wait a little bit, see how bad the county's budget is going to be this year, that you may be able to get a better deal. Because right now, the guy who owns the mall is getting his revenue off the mall. So we put a little bit more time on the mall, we get a better deal for the county kind of tax bill. And I would say this to you, Mr. City Manager, when you become a county commissioner, you can make that decision. But until then, it's done with your damn business. I'm not, I'm not making any decision. I'm well, just not making any I'm very concerned as a citizen of the county. It's not, it's not a concern to us. Our, our way of looking at it is when it was for sale for $2.5 million, it was a different board in place. Since that time, the board has changed and so is our opinion of what we need to do. Now, I don't I don't really appreciate the city manager coming to any forum or any type of public display and telling the county commissioners what they think we ought to do. I don't care what you think we ought to, we ought to do. We're going to do what we're going to do because we're the elected officials by everybody in this county, not just by your elite little group down South Charleston. So as far as those concerns, you got a piece of paper, I'll tell you what you can do with that piece of paper. <laughs> okay. my, my third concern with the mall is that between the purchase price, between the cost to fix the roof and to rehab the mall, you mentioned a $50 million bond. Uh, our numbers on the back of the napkin is a little bit less, maybe about $30 million, is as a city, I don't see how I could take on a project of that magnitude without increasing the tax rate. And so we're concerned. We're concerned. <laughs> you're going to take $7 million. I'm sorry? You're going to take on $7 million. That was off of lease revenue. So lease revenue was going to pay for that building. For at least for three years? From state revenue. Right. So that wasn't, that wasn't going to impact our budget at all. Because lease revenue was going to make the debt payments. Let me ask you a question. Though. Just let me ask you one simple question. Under whose authority, under what, under what charter does the city of Salisbury think it has the authority to overstep the county commissioners who are, are, are elected and, and charged with the thing of building or providing buildings for the school board? What, what you folks did when you decided that you were going to rescue the school board, why don't you put in a petition and take back Salisbury as a separate school district? I think why don't you do that? Our focus at that time was trying to resolve an issue and to resolve a problem. You're, 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 it's not your authority to do that. You are like the grandparent when a parent is trying to discipline or work with his children, I'll say work with, not discipline, work with his children, and his children, the school board, go crying to grandma that they're not getting what they want. So you and your magnanimous adventure propose something that you, A, don't have the ability to do, okay, and then want to use a law to build it that, that you truncate what that law is, making believe that everything is okay. You are the least, uh, I also watch the county. The, the local government commission fixed that at Salisbury and Learn. Yes, well, so the but, but ironically, you know, we're having an election now for the, the mayor and uh, the city council. And a few months ago, our mayor, Mr. Wilt, 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 or whatever his name is, sat there at the end of one of the close of the meetings and congratulated all of the members except for the new lady on how wonderful it was that they've been in charge of Salisbury for so many years. Who's been in charge for 14 years, who's been on the board for 18 years, and so on.
And I had a laugh as a, as a person coming in from the outside because I have a sneaking suspicion in the last 20 years, Salisbury has been in a rapid and spiraling decline under the management that, they, that they're so proud that they've been for the last 20 years. Now, when it comes to this 329 building, you weren't there when they took it over. So you're not criminally responsible for it. <laughs> but what the person that, 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 that's in charge of government in the, since 2000 would allow a government to take on a building that has tanks in the ground without having the original owner remediated. Okay? That's a criminal act. What, what happened and is the, the tanks were removed, but they missed some. And, and Diener cleared the site for development. And so we took it on thinking that it was clean. Are you sure? Yes, Are sir. you sure that's what happened? Because 90% of what I get from you people is just barely the truth. Right. Okay? I, just I, barely. I, I the love truth. the healthy skepticism of government. I think yeah. that's well, fundamental of our You know, democracy. the last time our mayor came here, we all sat here and listened to him. And nobody bothered to refute what he was saying because, and I try to do it, I'm trying to learn to be North Carolina nice. <laughs> but the reality is, at some point in time, you have to call a spade a spade. And what you people are doing is a joke. Okay? I'm not going to waste any more of my time while you're here. So, I'm going. Thank you. Anybody want to come? But I think one of the best things about living in a democracy is the fact that we can come to meetings like this and share our opinion, and that we're allowed to share our opinion and share our concerns. Um, That's your problem right there, is that we are not a democracy. No, we are a republic. That's right. And I agree. We're a constitutional we're a constitutional we're a republic. We're a constitutional republic. We're a law. Yeah. I agree. But I do like the idea that we can share opinions. Right. Right. And I, well, well, you raised the issue about us <coughs> not doing an environmental study on the mall when it's way premature. But your board, your council had the opportunity to do a phase one on the property that they purchased or were given, and they didn't do it. In fact, I have on record that Bill Bergen and Gene Miller appeared before the Board of Commissioners and said, we have an environmental one assessment. I said, I want to see it. That was in December. They never even ordered one until April, and they never produced it until August. So who had something to hide? It certainly wasn't the county commission. So my goal was, is I had a problem on that corner, and my goal was fixing it. And you we, still have a problem. And we've done it. And you're not going to get a central office on it. Well, I appreciate the fact that he wants to be sure that we don't make the same mistake they did by not doing that study and bringing that to our attention. We didn't go down there when they got that property and say, look, you didn't do it by one. Right. When they offered to give it to us, we asked for phase one. They swore they had one, they didn't, they lied. And they didn't even order one until April of the next, didn't get one until April of the next year. They hid it until August. Well, let me, let me correct that for so a second. So they're premature in telling us what to do. Yeah, it's, it's when, when the phase one was done, it was a county funded project with a $6 million letter of endorsement from the current county commission. It was not a county it funded was, project because we wanted it to be. It wasn't well, we city. didn't authorize it. But when the phase one was done, it wasn't a city project. It was a county funded project, and the phase well, one was a county, county funded project because we weren't stakeholders, if you remember. But that, we didn't have, we didn't do the phase one. That, uh, it was a county project, and the well, county did the phase can't. one. You, you need to get your dictionary and look up stakeholders. Give me the but I'll happy, be happy to answer any other questions while I'm here. I'd like to, to ask a question. Uh, sure. Uh, how many, how much funds are being diverted out of any of the city revenue into uh, paying for the deficit on fiber? None. None. Uh, would you be willing to have a, an independent audit uh, on uh, fiber? We have an independent audit every year. Mm -hmm. We have an independent audit every year. Um, not just on fiber, but on all of our operations to make sure that we don't have any issues in any 
areas. Are the fiber employees paid out of fiber? Yeah, yeah, it depends on what they do. So uh, they're a service agency, so they work on many different projects. So if they're out paving the streets, then they're being paid with those funds. We're paving Fulton Street right now. We're painting it. So. Uh, MI Connect is, is uh, providing free internet. They're, they're a, a municipal-owned uh, internet uh, provider. They're, they're providing free internet for low-income people. Is that something that Salisbury may at some point do in the future? As part of our Weston plan, we're looking at providing that service. So we just landed a big award for the West End, um, and we're looking at potentially doing that as a benefit to the West End. One of the issues we have with internet access is internet access has become a key to education for students to do their homework. Um, and there's a, there's a disparity there. If you don't have internet access, it is harder for you to do your homework and to be successful at school. You have to remember, Salisbury is a progressive city. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I'll be happy to answer any other questions. <coughs> Doug, I think it takes a lot of guts to come here. And I appreciate your comment. I don't agree with everything you're talking about. But that's my right. That's your right to express yourself. But I tell you what, I'm totally against giving away free internet to the so-called disadvantaged in this town. We give them everything else, and doggone it, I pay for my internet. I have fiber for my internet. I'm trying to support the city, but you start giving away the services. Next thing they want is free sewer. Next thing they want is free water. And, and um, it's got to stop somewhere. And I'm tired of supporting. All these deadbeats that don't work, and I pay tax. We're not, uh, Mr. Lynch, we're not looking at giving away free internet. We're looking at, um, if you go to some cities, they have the Wi-Fi connections where you can hook in and anyone can hook into them. And so it's not the same service that you would receive, but it would be areas in the community where there would be free Wi-Fi, and perhaps we'll do it in the downtown as well, where anyone can get on it. And so it won't be um, similar to your service, which you pay for. Well, really, but it'll be a hot spot. Okay. But it's, but it's still providing free internet access to anybody that has Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be a hot spot in the downtown. It'll be no different than when you go to the airport and get on the Wi-Fi there. Right. Actually, when you go to the airport, in a lot of cases, you pay nine dollars and ninety-five cents to be on that. Okay, it's a business. It's a it's a it's a actual capital business. One of the things that uh, Mayor Woodson told me a long time ago, when he costed me in his uh, in his establishment here, was that well, internet is just like sewer and water. You know, you have to provide the the city needs to provide that. The city needs to be in competition with private industry. Like I said, welcome to progressive Salisbury. My kids but, went to the library, rode their bicycles to get there, to be on the internet, because we didn't have it in our home. Rowan County provides free internet at the Rowan County Library. Exactly. Right. It's, it's no so, different than what the county government is currently doing. So I don't see where the uh, philosophy philosophical difference lies between that's I mean, part of the problem you don't see the difference but if that is the problem right now you don't see providing the difference. free internet free wi-fi at the library then why would it be an issue for the city well, to provide, provide free free internet throughout the entire city Mr. Parrish, the difference is that at the library i can go down there and, and use it as well it's not just the, the impoverished people people who in the west side and what you're doing, it sounds like is like free items, the free phones that if you vote for me were given out. And uh, no, anybody would be able to use okay. so what you're talking about a private Yeah, all you gotta do is park your car. You're not talking about a private hookup. You're talking about just talking about Yeah, just, just, just like the same, I'm not talking about hotspot. Yeah, you're talking about a hotspot. You're saying you're gonna put it in the West End? Is that what I heard earlier? We're talking about um, in the plan, providing wireless access just like they do at the library. 
and so for educational purposes. Right. The okay. Interconnect okay. question was actual access to the home. It was free access to the home. We're, no, we're not looking at that. Okay. Uh, okay. That's, that's, that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Years, I'm, I'm really sorry for the confusion. I've right. seen a lot of cities that provide hot spots. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah. There it is. It's normal. Uh, Raleigh, AT&T and Raleigh does that together. But you're not telling us that you're going to put a free Wi-Fi connection yeah. in an impoverished area you, you, yeah. over other areas. Right. right. Yeah. You're going to put it in every area. That way then fiber, what's fiber going to collect? Well, they would plug anything for me. I'd use Wi-Fi.